Hello, hello, hello. Today is Friday, August 9, 2024. 79 years ago, in 1945, on August 9, an atomic bomb was thrown on Nagasaki. And that ended World War II. You follow the solutions of problem 208. It was a difficult problem. Only five people have the correct answers. However, in 803, I discussed the double pendulum both in lecture 5 and in lecture 6. In lecture 6, I derived the frequencies omega minus and omega plus and also ratios A2 over A1. In the nice video solution of Keith Norman, he makes reference to lecture 5 of 803. His solution is perfect as always. I promise you that my next problem, 209, will be easier. Just to make you feel a little bit better. Okay? This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 208. Uh, it concerns a double pendulum, mass m length l, connected uh, mass m length l. So we have two simple pendulums connected together. Uh, in this diagram I have exaggerated theta 1 and theta 2 as I've called them. Uh, in practice they would be small angles uh, and we'll be using small angle approximations but for clarity I've done it like this and I've defined an x2 and x1, a tension t1, a tension t2, um, clearly we have mass mg and mass mg. I also define uh, omega naught to be the period of a single simple pendulum of length L. So it's extensively covered, the double pendulum, in 803 Lecture 5. In fact, what he actually covers are coupled oscillators, of which this is simply a type of coupled oscillator. OK, in that lecture, we learn about normal modes. And for two pendulums, pendula, coupled together, there will be two frequencies that we need to find two normal modes. And there will also be a ratio of the amplitudes um, between those normal modes. We will uh, just gently um, joggle the, the pendulum to, to, to cite it into, into its resonant states. So I, sim I, I assume that x1 will be of the form a1 cos omega t and x2 will be of the form A2 cos omega t. Note the omegas must be the same. That must be true for normal modes. Um, and if you're lost by any of this, then you really do need to look at lecture five. Uh, as I say here, must have the same uh, omegas. And also, uh, these two can be out of phase or they can be in phase. Uh, that phase difference is taken care of with the sign of a2, uh, but there can't be any other um, intermediate phases because we have no damping. Okay, a few uh, little, little things to take care of first of all. Sine theta 1 is clearly that, sine theta 2 is that. Um, I consider f equals ma vertically to determine the tension t1 and t2. Um, cos theta for small theta goes to 1. So um, if I consider f equals ma, say, on here, I would get uh, t2 cos theta minus mg uh, equals mass times 0 ma, because we're not considering any vertical acceleration. So I get t2 equals that, t1 equals that. So, I got this far on the previous page. I now consider f equals ma 
in the horizontal direction, firstly on the upper of the two masses at one, and then secondly on the lower mass uh, of the second pendulum, uh, second uh, half of the pendulum uh, at two. F equals MA horizontally gives me that. Um, I substitute in various values and I can get this differential equation. Uh, I also note that x double dot will be this, so I can then substitute in, uh, get this expression here, where the one thing to note is I've removed the cos omega t because that would occur in each of these terms, so I've just cancelled it out, rearranged, and I now have an expression for a2 over a1, which is this here. I do exactly the same thing here, and again losing the cos omega t as I go from here to here, and I get this expression here. So I now have uh, two equations with two unknown unknowns, sorry, where a2 over a1 a is one unknown, and omega squared is another unknown. So we can solve those. So these are the two equations I need to solve. Straightforward, I take uh, this value here, substitute in there, I get that. Rearrange, I then get um, a quadratic in omega squared, which is why I've written it like this. Solution is that. So I now have my two roots of this equation, these two roots here, for omega squared. So for the lower frequency, the lower normal mode, uh, I want the smaller of the two roots, so I take minus root 2 here, work through this, and I get these values. Uh, we can see that the omega minus is, the, uh, is, is a bit less than the frequency for a single simple pendulum. And I get a2 over a1 is this value, or roughly uh, 2.41, and because it's positive, it's in phase. So the, the two are doing that, two masses are doing that. Uh, same thing for the upper frequency, but this time I'm taking the plus rather than the minus. I get this value here, so you can see that the uh, upper frequency, the upper normal mode, uh, is getting on for double that of a single pendulum. Uh, and similarly, uh, a2 over a1 is this, uh, which gives me that here. And here they are out of phase because it's negative, so the two masses are doing this. Okay, just let you look at that. Fine. If you, uh, as Walter um, suggested, uh, actually make uh, a pendulum and simulate this action by, by moving... Um, the pendulum around. He suggests 30 centimeters is a good length. So if we take 30 centimeters for L, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared for G, um, omega is clearly uh, 2 pi over t, t is the period, we will get for a simple pendulum of length L, we get these values. For um, the lower normal mode, we get, uh, which is this one, we get these values, and for the higher mode we get that. So if you have built it and you've managed to do some timings I hope you get pretty close to these values. Thank you.